was on a boat, which is very strange because I had never been on a boat before. And this boat was rocking back and forth. Rocked so much it woke me up. I looked around, light was coming up, and it looked like there was water falling from the ceiling. I said, what the? I held my hand out, then I realized it wasn't water, it was dust. Dust was falling down from the ceiling, and uh, the bed was rocking back and forth. This is a Wednesday morning. I didn't know what was going on. Well, Lazy Bones, he had jumped up already. He started screaming, Day Long Jogger! Day Long Jogger! The, the, uh, see, uh, people used to believe that there was a, a dragon under the earth. And when, when the dragon moved, see, then you did what you had it was an earthquake. That's what you had. <laughs> well, the first thing I did, I got up and I said, I got to get my pants on. You can't think without your pants on. Got my pants on and I, three or four steps up to the street level. So I ran up to the street level. And I looked across the street, across Washington Street, and the whole front of the building across the street had fallen down. You could look inside like it was a doll house, see? Sometimes we'd venture outside of Chinatown. I, well, I was dangerous, of course, you know. In those days, the Chinese boys wander outside of Chinatown, and those white boys would beat you up. And the uh, problem was, my three friends, well, they were Christian boys, so uh, their parents cut off their uh, queue. You know, they, we used to wear a long braid of hair back here. And, uh, but my father, he was old-fashioned, you know. <laughs> so I still had the queue. And the problem was, we'd go out of Chinatown, and those white boys would start chasing us, you know. And uh, Next thing you know, because I was small, they'd, they'd grab my queue, pull me back. Then the other boys would have to come back and get me. Well, there'd be a fight, you know, and everybody'd be black eyed and all. <laughs> uh, Tom, Tommy, Tommy Gunn, he came famous later. He, he learned how to fly an airplane. Uh, one of the first Chinese pilots. <laughs> anyway, uh, he got sick and tired of me being dragged back all the time. So one day, I remember it was right, right over there. He said to me, uh, Hugh, oh, what do you want? Come here. So, like a fool, I went over. He grabbed me. <laughs> he knocked me down, reached in his pocket, took out a penknife, and cut off my cue. See? He says, now we don't have to chase you anymore. Now you can run with the rest of us. <laughs> well, I went home, and all hell broke loose. <laughs> See, my father, he, I told you, he was an old-fashioned man, superstitious man. He believed, many Chinese men believe, if your son's cue is cut short, you see, then you're going to live a short life. Oh, he was so angry. Ha! I had to stay at my cousin's house for 10 days. 